Hi guys, this is Adam from Cash Digital and this is a video to go with the blog post for the best SEO extensions for Google Chrome. So let's jump straight into it. Okay, I've got my uh, UK website loaded here and the extensions that we talk about in the plugin are all loaded up in the top right hand corner. So let's go into the first one which is going to be the no follow extension. The nofollow extension, the link is shown here, where I'm hovering here, uh, and it just tells me that it's enabled. I'm going to go to a page which is set to nofollow, and then you can see how the plugin reacts. So I'm going to click here, and you can see this pop up in the bottom right hand corner has popped up to tell me that this page I'm looking at is a nofollow page, uh, and it's an index page. Uh, sorry, sorry. It's a no index page and it's follow. Uh, so you can see no follow is false, so which means it, it is a follow page. So the links of this page will be followed, uh, and the no index is true, which is showing red here. Uh, so the page will not be indexed by Google. So the page won't be indexed, but the links of the page will be crawled. So it wouldn't interrupt any crawling path. Uh, and that is basically how that uh, plugin is used in functionality wise. Uh, the options of the plugin, I think pretty much by default, they load like this enabled, disabled. Uh, obviously, when it enabled, um, you can change the styling a little bit. You can change where the pop up displays. I like it in the bottom right hand corner, I like it conditionally. You could, in theory, have it loading on every page, but. I only have it loading when it's on a page which meets the criteria that I want it to load on. Um, uh, that's it. That's how that plugin works. So the next plugin which we will talk about is the Canonical Inspector plugin, uh, and that plugin is the one located here. Where I'm hovering here, and you can see it is displaying in this grey, light grey colour. That's what it does as long as it's on a page which is meeting the uh, which has the same real canonical tag in the source code in the head of that page. Um, let me trigger it for you so that it goes blue, i.e., it's not matching. Within the blog post that I wrote, uh, there is some uh, anchor point links here to the plugin. So if I click on this one here to Canonical Inspector, you'll notice the URL in the browser has changed, therefore the canonical link now doesn't match anymore. Uh, when it doesn't match, you can hover over the uh, extension icon and it will tell you the canonical link of what it's looking for it to match, so it, what it should be. Uh, if it's a match and you hover over it, it, hover over it, it doesn't tell you anything. I, so if I take that anchor point off in the URL, see, it just tells me that it matches, but it doesn't actually, you know, display the path as well. So there you go. Um, that's it. That's the canonical inspector tag. No options that you use or anything. Don't toy with anything. It's that's it. Out of the box, how it loads is it works. Uh, the next one, IMA, redirect path. Produced by a, uh, a digital marketing agency called IMA. Um, so the icon for that is here. You can find it here. And it will basically, yeah, it will tell you any redirects that were taken to get to the URL that you're loading. So, for example, if I knocked off the www dot in front of cashdigital.co.uk, what will happen is obviously my HC access is set to redirect any non www requests back to the www version of the website. So what that's going to do, that's going to trigger the IMA redirect path extension. You can you can watch it happen now after I press send. See, boom, as soon as I press send, send it jumped up to the 301 to tell me that it's just followed the 301 path from the non-dub version to the dub dub version. And that's the beauty of it. And you can click on it and it will tell you a bit more information about that. It makes the plugin really good for um, discovering redirect chains. Um, also, uh, so you know, more than one redirect, more than one 301 or whatever redirect it is to get to the final destination URL. 
Also, it will tell you if it's used a 302 redirect or a 301, which is very helpful in terms of SEO, because people that do SEO will know that a 301 is a permanent redirect, whereas a 302 is just a temporary. You're saying to Google that this page is going to be republished, whereas a 301 you're saying it's gone for good, it's moved permanently. Um, and that's how this is used. It's also good for giving uh, finding out server request errors, this plugin. So if you've hit a 404 on a on a website, it will tell you that as well. So if I type in a bit of rubbish there, um, it will trigger a 404. And there you go, the, um, the plugin as well here, you see it is telling me there's a 404 there. So 404 page not found. So it's a really, really handy plugin. You'll see this one pop up um, in other people's lists talking about best uh, SEO extensions. It's very popular and very widely widely used and quite rightly so. Uh, so the next one on the list is Check My Links. Again, another another very popular, popular plugin, very uh, useful. What it allows you to do is go to a page, any page, and check all of the links on that page and it will tell you if any of them are, are broken, which is fantastic. Um, I'm going to leave myself open for some embarrassment here and click it on my home page without having pre-tested it. Sometimes there is template elements within WordPress. Usually not, not, uh, not sure if I should call them template elements, but things like uh, click to call buttons where they trigger a uh, initiation of a, a Skype call or something. Sometimes they, I've noticed they come up as broken uh, links within this plugin. I, I look at... Uh, whole heap of websites in my day day-to-day you know, -day work um, so I'm regularly checking uh, links on a page and sometimes uh, you know this this plugin will trigger some invalid links on a page when they there aren't actually so if you check it out in more depth run screaming frog crawl on these sites as long as you're not finding 404s that's fine but if it does trigger and says it's a 404 um, obviously it gives you something you need to look into a little bit deeper but generally it's very accurate um, there you go there's no broken links on my page everything gets circled green uh, all the links anything that is broken would highlight red uh, and you'd get some uh, a number shown up here in your in invalid links um, that's it again with the settings on this one nothing that I've ever changed okay so in here you can exclude links from certain domains, um, I've not looked into these settings before. I know they never needed to, never found a, uh, a, a, a need to, to talk, tamper with the settings. It's always worked on request for me, and I've been using it for many years. This plugin, so yeah, check my links. Great plugin. Uh, it's what it's really great for is actually locating the broken link on a page. Quite often. The way you'll want to use this plugin, or the way I tend to use it, is I've, uh, I'm aware that there's a broken link on a page because I've found it from a, a report through Screaming Frog, uh, and then it's a case of me locating that broken link where it is on the page. And sometimes it can be in a drop-down menu. It won't necessarily be instantly on a page how it statically loads. So the plugin's really handy for, for, for locating it, especially with the, in terms of it highlights everything red. Everything that's broken, that is. Okay, next plugin is the Open SEO Stats plugin, which was formerly known as um, PageRank Status. This plugin, I really like one feature of it, but it offers a whole heap of features, a whole host of information, pretty much anything that you, all the information you want on a site, you can get to it from this plugin, this Open Stats plugin. It breaks it down. Kind of on a page or a domain level basis um, and more so obviously uh, this is SEO stats this is kind of pulling in some link type data from you know some of these sources I, I, I pay no attention to any of this if I'm being absolutely honest with you but there is one element that I pay attention to here and that's here it's this Google cash box I find it's the easiest and quickest plugin that I've come across so far where you can quickly, you, you can have a page loaded and you can just quickly click on this open SEO stats box and I suppose it helps but that by default it preloads on this SEO stats tab um, and it tells me the, the cache date, 
or when it last cached basically straight away if, if the page hasn't cached it will say NA um, you know, I'll show you by going to a, a non caching page um, but the other elements the other features of the plugin there you go so that's a non caching page uh, are great if you want to find out this information I generally find it out in other ways but you know it gives you links to uh, find out who is information um, it will tell you server location which can be quite helpful where the server is located obviously here in UK gives you an IP of the the server the backlink data I pay no attention to it you know if you're doing SEO seriously you'll have access to some paid tools you won't rely on these free metrics which are you know not accurate to be honest with you uh, traffic stats never paid attention to this tab site information it, it's handy it links straight into things like built with which obviously gives you a whole load of information about the technologies that the site's running on uh, it's handy for the quick uh, DNS name server information that you get here um, some on-page stats if the page that you're looking at you know is no index follow I'm sure it tells you about well it does here h1s h2s keywords descriptions all the um, the usual suspects I suppose the same information that you're going to get in a number of SEO extensions so where you pull this information from is really comes down to a matter of preference and what you're more comfortable with using there's a number of plugins that offer it I'm, I'm about to talk about another one uh, in after this one SEO quake which offers all of this information we're looking at here um, like I say my main love for this plugin is how quickly I can get the Google cache information from it um, I think that's very useful um, and that's it okay next on the list SEO quake SEO Quake is a very popular plugin, very well known. Um, again, I'm I, I go back to the same thought processes that I have with the Open SEO stats for this plugin, with it in, to, in terms of productivity and things that I want to get done. There's one thing that this plugin offers me, which I know another uh, plugin that I used to use. Uh, I can't remember what that one was called, SEO something, but this one's SEO Quake. Uh, it offers me the functionality to allow me to extract the search results from Google. Okay, uh, so th that's why I like this plugin. I also like its page info um, stats. I suppose I like the way it's laid out and the way it, it, I, I, I can access the data. I certainly like it for getting the number of keywords and the keyword densities. Not that they play much have much play in SEO anymore but it's 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 good to know about your content and this gives me a good snapshot and way of finding out more information about the uh, the content of the page so a whole load of information there about the content of the page um, that I, I rarely use to be honest what I use this for a lot is uh, extracting the data from the search results so to get to that on SEO Quake you want to go to the search results. Uh, so if I go to Google, I'll show you what I'm talking about. If I knew how to spell Google, that would help. Threat has been detected. Right, that's a threat detected because I typed Google incorrectly before, and that's obviously been claimed by spammers. G O G O L E dot co dot UK. Don't go there. It triggered my uh, my antivirus. So the SERP overlay from SEO Quake is what you see here. Okay, SEO Quake's on obviously, and this is what I'm talking about here. Export CSV. What it will do is it will export all the results on the page you're looking at so if you're looking at 10 results it will export 10 results if you're looking at 100 results it will export 100 results um, that's um, great for the work that I do it's great for when I'm doing a on-site audit on a website obviously and I'm looking at all the URLs that Google has cached for a domain uh, and I want to extract all those to, to down into Google so 
I'm about to run out of time. Sorry, so yeah, ran out of time, had to uh, trigger a new video, uh, put, it on, put them together. So I was talking about the SEO Quake plugin, uh, the beauty of the SERP overlay, being able to extract the data. Yeah, obviously, if you're doing a lot of work or you're doing an audit, you put it onto 100 results, extract that data out. You've got it in CSV. You can pull that in uh, to Excel, get all your URLs nice and clean, do whatever you need to do moving forward from that. Uh, obviously, anyone that does a lot of SEO will know that's a really, really handy tool, really handy to be able to do. So that's the main use I get out of SEO Quake. One of the pet hates, the pet problems, especially if you're working in an agency where a lot of people put these extensions on, is the setup of SEO Quake. One thing is it's essential. Uh, you, you must turn it on so that the SERP overlay part of it, which you'll see I have turned off here, where all these question marks are. Okay, what that is is it's the SEO Quake bar on the SERP overlay, and and all these question marks are are, are is something that I had to set by default. It will be. They won't load with question marks. They, they will actually load on request as the page loads. So as soon as you start doing searches, once you've installed SEO Quake, all this data starts getting pulled instantly on page load. Uh, and then the problem is you hit um, uh, levels primarily with Google, essentially, first, uh, where you start getting asked for capture codes because you get... Uh, multiple requests from the same IP go into Google. So you're going to Google, give me information, give me information, give me information, and eventually they're like, this is automated requests. Are you a person or are you a computer? And then you keep getting capture codes. And if you're working in an agency where a lot of you are on the same network, on the, based on the same IP range, uh, it starts causing all sorts of problems for people that are trying to do searching. So I would say, uh, preference, go to the options, and set the preferences here by request. Uh, load para parameters. Anywhere where you see it saying load parameters, uh, just put it by request. This is general, then this is the actual one I was talking about on the SERP overlay. Put that by request uh, on the SERP bar. Anywhere, because it pops up in a few different places. You can configure this plugin to, to really work how you want it to. You can see there's a lot of options uh, if you are going to use it. Um, but just make sure all of those load parameter requests are set to by request. And you can, you know, or you can turn them all off here, I suppose, is the other way around. But, uh, there you go. Last plugin on the list is the Wappalyzer plugin. Wappalyzer plugin is. It's great just for telling you the platform and the technologies that the website's running on. So if you're the kind of person that gets thrown a lot of URLs from your team or from people that you're working with, saying, "Can you know? Can you optimize this site? Can we get great results with this site?" It just allows you to know what the technologies are that you're dealing with before you actually deal with it. Now, you know, anyone that does a lot of SEO knows that most platforms are optimizable. But some are harder than others, some take more work than others, some are more out the box uh, ready than others, and some get uh, have access to a lot of uh, add-ins, plugins, extensions, whatever you want to call them, more so than others. Um, so yeah, the plugin is great for knowing about the technologies. It's this plugin I'm talking about here, big W there for WordPress, so it's telling you that uh, my website is on WordPress, uh, it tells you some web server information, it tells you about widgets and frameworks and uh, plugins that you may have running on the site. Uh, it tells you if you've got analytics installed. Um, so again, it's very useful if you're looking at potential client sites and you just want to know what there is there already um, and how uh, you know how easy it's going to be for you to work, how familiar you're going to be with the, their platform. Um, that's it really. That, that's the beauty of that plugin. Just Get, getting access to that information it's nothing that isn't covered in open seo stats through the built in uh, the built with link um you know it's it's just it's one click of a button and the information is there on a drop down it's very quick very easy and very handy uh, and that's the beauty of that plugin that's it really so there's seven on the list um and, and that was it i hope you found this video helpful thanks for watching